It's been a great year for APS. I would like to take a few moments to highlight some of our society's accomplishments. APS has developed several new offerings to help disseminate our robust collection of valuable resources and research. I'm most excited to announce the launch this month of our new open access journal, Phytobiomes. Our journal strategy task force, led by Nick Grunwald, recommended this move into the realm of full open access publishing on the last day of last year's annual meeting in Pasadena. From concept to launch in just under a year is truly an extraordinary accomplishment. Phytobiomes is now accepting manuscripts and the first submissions are already in process. The journal's strength is in its multidisciplinary editorial team led by Editor-in-Chief Carolyn Young and Associate Editor-in-Chief Linda Kinkle. So if you have a manuscript ready or nearly ready, consider becoming a part of history and submit it to Phytobiomes. Another advantage for you early adopters, article processing charges for the first 45 articles will be deeply discounted. We are committed to improving the author experience for our journals. Thanks to additional recommendations from our Journal Strategy Task Force and the hard work of our editors-in-chief and staff, we have streamlined the author instructions and developed a single landing page for all of our journals to find at a glance just what you need to know. We are currently re-envisioning our other information platforms, including Plant Management Network and Plant Disease Management Reports, through the task forces that are led by Christy Palmer and Carrot Cox. Our journals are taking on a new lateral transfer process to help authors find the right publication for their manuscript. You may be like me uh, and sometimes not being quite sure which APS journal is right for your manuscript, but not wanting to face resubmission to another journal if the match wasn't quite there. With lateral transfer, great manuscripts may find the right home in the APS journal family without going through the review process again. Additional digital resources have also seen upgrades. We have expanded the growing APS image database with the addition of 2,500 new images. We now have more than 4,500 images from Compendia and the plant diseases caused by bacteria CD. This database is really valuable because it includes descriptive metadata you won't find in other image databases. And finally, though some of our products move to a digital landscape, our print publications are still as valuable as ever. We shipped more than 25,000 copies of our farmer's guides to soybean diseases and corn diseases this year. We especially thank the editors and authors for making these guides a reality and congratulate Editor-in-Chief Darren Eastburn and everyone who helped APS Press uh, achieve this amazing feat. Well, APS is the best source of plant health knowledge because of our members. We have been working to enhance the membership experience over the last year and have made significant strides. APS is committed to establishing strong connections with our colleagues worldwide. In January, we officially launched the new Developing Economy Discounted Membership. Continuing to develop critical relationships worldwide, APS signed Memoranda of Understanding with the Plant Pathology Societies of Brazil and India. To promote active collaboration and tangible outcomes, working groups have been established under these agreements and are being coordinated under the Office of International Programs. It's also been a focus over the past year to streamline and coordinate our early career activities. The new APS 2026 Professional Development Forum brings together the great professional development ideas and activities of our many boards, offices, and committees under one umbrella with Renee Rio at the helm. I urge you to take a look in the careers area of the website to find relevant resources to help you take your career to the next level. For the first time at this year's meeting, we are offering Reviewing a Manuscript 101. This session is designed to present the best practices for conducting a peer review of a scientific manuscript. Upon completion of this session, attendees will be added to the database as a reviewer. If you cannot make it to the session, keep an eye out for the recorded version after the meeting. We thank our APS Office of Education under Tom Mitchell's leadership for developing this offering.
our public policy board was instrumental in the traction that we realized this year for phytobiomes awareness. In March, we launched the Phytobiomes Roadmap, developed by an interdisciplinary group of researchers led by key APS members listed here. The successful unveiling in Washington, D.C. gave key policy personnel a look at why increased funding for phytobiomes is so important. We hosted the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research's convening meeting on phytobiomes to help define the scope, budget, and timeline of potential FAR funding in this area. APS is also a founding sponsor of the new Phytobiomes Alliance that is just being initiated. With implementation of the actions outlined in the roadmap well underway, I encourage everyone's participation in these exciting new opportunities. This year, we'll take an in-depth look at your meeting experience. The annual meeting board understands that attending our annual meeting is a choice, so we are actively working to provide attendees a high-value experience with the best science and networking. We are in a unique position this year as we'll be planning both our 2017 annual meeting in San Antonio and the International Congress of Plant Pathology in Boston in 2018. This Congress will be a global summit of leading scientists focusing on the sustainable production and protection of plants. The theme of the Congress is Plant Health in a Global Economy and presentations will cover the full range of research topics that affect plant health at a local and global scale. As we move closer to the Congress, many of our boards, offices, and committees will be charged with thinking globally about our meeting programming. We look forward to everyone's involvement in this grand event. Save the date because it will be here before you know it, and please watch for more information. And now, to hear how we support all of these undertakings, our treasurer, Steve Slack, will provide the APS financial status report. Thank you, Sally. Fiscal year 2016 was a financially impressive year for APS and one in which we met or exceeded the majority of our financial priority. The categories in the first column represent each of the business centers for APS. For the year ending June 30th, 2016, APS had an unaudited net income of $281,662. The total revenue for the year was $5.8 million and the total expenses were $5.5 million. On this chart, please note that the last column reflects a distribution of overhead across all income categories. You might think of this as the cost to each business center incurred by the use of headquarters staff. APS has been reinvesting the surplus dollars into innovation projects to help drive the financial health of APS. As I mentioned, revenue for APS was almost $6 million. The breakdown of this revenue falls into the following categories. Journals, you can see phytopathology 16%, plant disease 18%, MPMI 13%, and this equaled 47% of the society revenue. APS Press totaled another 23%. 15% of the revenue was derived from last year's annual meeting. Plant Management Network brought in 6% of the revenue and member dues comprised 6% of the total revenue. Our journals and publications continue to serve as the bread and butter of our society equaling 70% of our revenue. APS Press has many new titles and products now arriving, as well as the new Phytobiomes Journal. And this will bolster the impact on income in the next year. With respect to the $5.5 million in expenses this year, the breakdown of cost incurred as follows. 13% from member services, including the Office of Public Relations and Outreach, and the Public Policy Board, 12% were from last year's annual meeting. Journals comprised 26% of costs. Plant Management Network was 3%. APS Press spent 21% of total resources, and 24% were general and administrative expenses. This category includes the building, equipment, technology, phones, bank fees, and insurance costs. 
Publications and journals accounted for 47% of year's expenses. Over time, APS has been profitable from its operations. The red line includes investment and pension fund activity. You can see that we, as a society, benefit greatly from the good management of our business centers, which tends to mute the external factors that are shown on the red line. This concludes my financial report, and at this time, I'd like to welcome David Gaduri to report on APS's membership efforts. Thank you, Steve. Our present membership worldwide stands at 4,579, with nearly 3,000 regular professional members. Our student and our emeritus membership categories are growing, and a smaller percentage of our members are now postdocs. Many of our members are transitioning to retirement, and graduates are stepping into some of those recently opened positions. Our society is based in the United States, but we're truly international, with over a third of our membership distributed among 96 countries worldwide. We have our strongest presence in Asia and Europe. Five countries with the largest number of APS members are China, Canada, Japan, Australia, and edging out Brazil for the number five spot for the first time this year, India. Thank you, David. I would like to recognize APS Council that have served with me this year. Tim Murray, Mary Palm, Rick Bennett, David Gaduri, Steve Slack, Eric Tedford, Lindsay Dutoy, Paul Vincelli, Lawrence Statinoff, Nick Grunwald, and Amy Hope. It's been my honor and privilege to serve with you. And now, let's welcome our incoming council members. Kira Bowen is our incoming vice president, and Gary Monkfold is our incoming counselor at large. Additionally, Jay Scheidt will be joining as the new divisional counselor. Congratulations and welcome. We are pleased to recognize the member leaders who are completing their terms this year. Ronald French Monar, Jackie Fletcher, Thomas Wolpert, Jana Beckerman, and from council, Rick Bennett, Eric Tedford, and Lawrence Datinoff. We truly appreciate your service to this organization and thank you. What we've accomplished this year would not have been possible without our volunteers. Our society is in the enviable position of counting many volunteers among our membership who assure that APS remains vibrant and relevant. I want to express my sincere gratitude to each manuscript reviewer, editor, editor-in-chief, committee member and chair, session moderator, board, office, task force and forum member and leader, and council member for his or her commitment to APS over the past year. 